Hello and welcome to the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is April 18th, 2022. Here is the Feisty News for Women. According to Gina Zerlo, co-director of the Center for Study of Global Christianity, the future of religion is female. 52% of Christians are women, but she says the contributions by women are far more reaching because women are more religious than men when measuring everything from frequency of private prayer to worship service attendance. Christianity is currently the world's largest religion and studies show that compared to Christian men, Christian women are more likely to attend weekly church services, pray daily, and express that religion is important in their lives. Gina writes, in the Gospels, women were the last at the foot of Jesus' cross and the first at his tomb. Throughout history, women were exemplars of faith as mystics and martyrs, royal women converting their husbands and supporting convents, and founders of denominations and churches that are now all over the world. Women make up the majority of Christians today. Outside of Christianity, Gina's current research illustrates that women are the majority of the church nearly everywhere in the world, and that its future is poised to be shaped by African women in particular. Africa is home to 27% of the world's Christians, the largest share in the world. And by 2050, that figure would likely be 39%. Even Catholic sisters outnumber priests and religious brothers in Africa and on every continent. Women will be shaping the future of religion or women have been shaping the future of religion and were never given credit. I think the latter is most likely. Thank you, Gina, for bringing this important information to the public. In other news, public health officials in Europe and the United States are investigating an outbreak of severe hepatitis in young children. Hepatitis is an inflammation of the liver, often caused by a virus, but the viruses that commonly cause the illnesses, hepatitis A, B, C, D, and E, have been ruled out in these cases, and doctors do not understand why. In some cases, the illness was so severe that the children needed a liver transplant, although no deaths have been reported. The World Health Organization said that it was investigating 74 cases of severe acute hepatitis in children under the age of 13 in the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland. Three cases in Spain, nine cases have been reported in children ages six and younger in Alabama in the United States. All of the children were otherwise healthy before becoming ill. And there are no obvious links among the children as far as their diets, travel, or activities. According to stats, the children in Alabama have experienced symptoms that have included diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, jaundice, and blood tests showed signs of elevated liver enzymes. Parents should be on the lookout for these cases and report them to the CDC or their state health department. In other news, in 2019, actor Johnny Depp filed a $50 million defamation lawsuit claiming his former wife, actress Amber Heard, damaged his reputation after she wrote an op-ed essay in the Washington Post that described that she was a survivor of domestic abuse. Although she did not name Don Johnny Depp in the essay, he claims that it was implied that she was describing their relationship. Then in 2020, Amber countersued for $100 million on the premise that Depp's accusations that she lied damaged her reputation. The legal saga is now in the public courts playing out like a bad reality show. Why is this case important to women? Let's first hear from Ayala Younger, a former trial lawyer, entertainment lawyer, and film producer in Miami. She will have the best insight on this celebrity feud from a legal stance and from the stance of its impact as entertainment. Ayelet, welcome to the Feisty. Please help us to understand why this legal battle between Amber Heard and Johnny Depp is important to women. Absolutely. So first of all, T. Erica, thank you so much for having me on the Feisty. I, uh, I've watched several segments and it's amazing. Um, let's, to move over to what's going on with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. So. 
the publicity that this case is getting is really, to me, the problem. The, the publicity of the case makes it so much more available in people's minds that if I speak out about this domestic abuse that I'm experiencing or that I experienced in order to empower myself, my own narrative, or to empower other women, well, there's a really good chance that I'll be then dragged to another legal battle that's going to make me either have to prove my case, prove my case over, it's going to put me on the defensive and potentially, well, not potentially, certainly when you get sued, it's going to cost you money. In the American system, you pay your attorneys whether the other side is right or not. So it's going to cost money right off the bat, not to mention if you are unable to uh, prove your case, which domestic abuse, cases that are he said, she said that way are complicated to prove or disprove. So you kind of never know going into it, um, which side it's going to fall on. And um, that level of uncertainty, if you put yourself in the shoes of a domestic abuse victim, they want things to go away. They want, they want to move on with their lives. They certainly don't want to be financially accountable to their abuser. Um, and they don't want to have to prove that they were victimized over and over again. The publicity that this case is getting is putting women and domestic abuse victims generally on notice that you have to think twice before you come out with your story. And that's a very damaging state of affairs for victims and for future victims that are not going to have the benefit of, uh, you know, the mentorship that they need to get out of these very complicated situations. Wow. Thank you, Ayelet, for this remarkable insight. You're absolutely right. Regardless of the outcome of this case, women who felt free to speak out about their past abusive relationships may now hesitate to speak up because their partners could potentially drag them into the public eye to defend themselves. This is a far cry from the urgency to believe women's accusations of abuse that the Me Too movement created. Following the rise of the Me Too movement in 2017, when women were boldly speaking out about sexual and physical abuse and harassment from men, and men were being held accountable swiftly, men became afraid of the power of a woman's voice. It is with no doubt that Amber knew that her accusation held weight when she wrote the Washington Post op-ed in 2018, and she figured that she could throw her story in the mix without repercussion. Yet, Johnny Depp did not take it lightly and called her bluff. But was she bluffing? I've been following the reports from the Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp defamation case, and I've been flabbergasted by the statements that are surfacing as friends, family, and mental health professionals have made public their private observations of the former couple. While Amber Heard likely believed that her accusations of abuse could fly under the radar and she could portray herself as another innocent abuse victim, the former couple's ma marriage counselor was asked to publicly share what she witnessed when she spoke with the pair individually and as a couple about their marriage issues. Dr. Laurel Anderson described their marriage as mutually abusive with both parties initiating fights. She also stated that Amber admitted to instigating physical violence against Johnny Depp to get him to stay with her. But that's not the worst of it. Apparently, family members shared that while both have a history of family abuse, which causes individuals to imitate the same behaviors, Johnny Depp has managed to keep his innate tendency to abuse under control until he met Amber. Amber, according to former assistant and friends, has been consistently verbally abusive and insulting to a multitude of people. It seems that once this pair met up, they both were able to release the toxic versions of themselves and continue to hurt each other in a twisted, toxic love story, which finally ended in divorce. Now here they are again, battling it out in court. Amber was right. She was in an abusive relationship, but she played a major role in the abuse. I'm disappointed that with all of her abusive tendencies, Amber Heard tried to portray herself as an innocent victim of abuse while she herself is a known abuser. Ladies, no one deserves to be hit, but 
If you attack a man verbally or physically, you can't scream abuse when he attacks you back. I am a feminist and I'm all about equality. And yes, women can be abusive too. Ladies, you don't have to be afraid to come forward with your story if you stand in the solid truth of being a real victim of abuse. If that is your story, tell it. Truth cannot be refuted. However, if you are a woman with toxic behavior, you do need to understand that no man will just sit there forever and allow you to scream at him, insult him, hit him, and disrespect him without retaliating at some point. What story do you want to tell? If you're a woman or a man who does not want to have to tell a story or abuse or defend yourself against accusations, you have to make yourself a promise. If you experience one sign that your partner is abusive, don't let it slide. Leave and don't look back. The first time he screams at you with fists balled up, the first time he pushes you in anger, or the first time he says something that he knows will hurt your feelings, it's time to go and never look back. The first time her actions cause you to become a version of yourself that you cannot be proud of, leave her alone. You can't teach them how to love you better. They learn toxic love from their family and they're looking for a perfect match to show toxic love the way they learned how to love. If that's what you want, if that's not what you want, don't try to change them. You're not a mental health professional. You're not a savior. Walk away. If you stay with someone who offers toxic love, you're not saving them. You are giving consent. If you give consent to toxic love, don't turn around and write about how you are a victim because you are not a victim. The first time it's their fault. The second time it's your choice. You get to choose the story you tell. Do you want to write a victim essay or do you want to write a true love story? It is your choice. Stand up for yourself. Well, it's time for a break. Why did the princess leave her kingdom behind? How do men react when women enter their playground? Answer to these questions right after the break. Be right back. Hi everyone, my name is Coco. I'm the founder of Coco Face Yoga. Face Yoga is a great natural solution to regain or maintain your youthful appearance. We wake up sleeping muscle in the face to lift up the face and relax overworking muscle for wrinkle reduction aka it can be natural alternative to botox or plastic surgery at the age of 27 i had a plastic surgery failure which made me realize that i should have done some natural solutions like face yoga then i started studying it started teaching it and then it's a big business we offer the service tutorials through our face yoga app, social media, including TikTok and YouTube, private session, group session, and certification. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the feisty news for women. Girl, guess what? According to the Japan Times, Japan's former princess Mako has given up her royal title to marry her college boyfriend and move to New York City. Princess Mako is now reportedly assisting curators at the Metropolitan Museum of Art as an unpaid volunteer. Royal law in Japan requires a princess to leave the imperial family upon marriage to a commoner. So Princess Mako gave up a royal title and turned down a $1.3 million payout from the Japanese government that is paid to royal women who lose their royal status when they marry. Princess Mako graduated from International Christian University with a degree in art and cultural heritage, studied art history at Scotland's University of Edinburgh, and then earned her master's in art museum and gallery studies in 2016 at the University of Leicester which means she set herself on the fast track to creating a solid career. Okay, Princess Mako, you had all the royal connections, yet you don't need them because you laid a foundation of education for yourself. Many women around the world can be inspired by your bold move. Love who you want, but first be prepared to forge your own path in this world. Congratulations, Princess. In other news, 
A video game activity study published in the scientific journal PLOS One in 2015 had very interesting results when two researchers decided to test real video game players of Halo and see how they would react to female players. Halo is a first person game in which players work together to kill members of the other team. Halo players can speak to each other during the game live, so researchers play pre-recorded female voice comments, a male voice player, and a control player that did not speak. The researchers played the Halo games themselves and then just played the recording throughout the game. They found that lower skilled players were more hostile towards a female voice teammate, especially when they were performing poorly. Those same male players who were losing the game behaved submissively towards a male voice player in the identical scenario, the researchers wrote. The results support an evolutionary explanation of female-directed aggression, with low-status men fighting female competitors for a place in the hierarchy. Did you get that? When men with low skills experience the presence of women on any skill level, they automatically feel threatened and lash out aggressively to scare them away. Yet they bow down to any men they believe are superior in skill to them. The next time a man reacts negatively to your presence, just smile and understand that he believes you are an automatic threat to him because he knows that he is inferior. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for watching the feisty news for women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard. Welcome to the feisty. 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 Welcome to the feisty. 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 Welcome to the feisty. News for women. <laughs>